Hey there, welcome, and uh, thanks for joining me. I'm going to paint this little geranium I bought at the nursery. I'm out on my back patio today, and it's a beautiful spring day, so why not paint one of these, huh? I'll start off by doing my drawing, of course. I want to get this pattern in here and create a dynamic composition by running the, the uh, flowers off the top and the bottom of the canvas, and also that shadow off to the right. Let's get started here. I'm going to begin by mixing some pools of paint. First, the leaves in light. I like to mix these things on my palette to compare the different colors uh, side by side before I ever have to go onto the canvas. Likewise, I'll get my uh, dark here of the leaves and I'm building it in comparison to that pile of light colored paint that I just made. My shadow color now. I'm gonna push this a little more to the blue side so that uh, I'm really giving the, um, the effect of light here on my canvas. Ah, then the color of the, the uh, geranium bloom itself. Man, it's a beautiful day out here. You hear those birds in the background? Wonderful. I'm going to start with my shadow. Looks kind of dark here on the panel. The panel, by the way, is a primed, pre-primed um, hardboard and it's a, a gesso that's tinted, so it's a little bit of a warm tint. It's not pure white. But even though it's not pure white, this shadow color looks pretty dark on here right now. But I happen to know because I mixed it on my palette there. My palette's a mid-tone gray, so I know that this is just a little bit darker than the middle value. I like the cast shadow because it's an abstract shape. Now I'm going to lighten. Using that pool there, I'm going to lighten it and warm it up a little bit. As the cast shadow extends away from the object casting it, it gets a little bit warmer because there's more reflected light coming into it. Hey, if you like my videos, would you do me a favor? Would you give me a like and a comment? I'd like it if you'd subscribe too. That'd be great. The pot here is a plastic one, but it looks kind of terracotta. Now notice I started a pool of color for this, and as I make changes, as they, the form, it's a kind of a cylinder, right? And as that cylinder turns away from or toward the sun, it changes color. I'm using that mother pile of color, then I'm adjusting that, either warmer, or cooler, lighter, or darker, to match what I'm seeing in real life here. And I'm just putting, you know, basically spots of color down right now. You don't see me doing a lot of blending here, right? Observation is key. Really look at your subject. I like doing these little uh, paintings of flowers out on my patio. It's a good way to spend an afternoon. Plus, it is a fantastic way to study painting from life and really trying to focus on painting what you see, not what you think you see or what you know about a terracotta planter, right? But looking at it and trying to replicate those color temperatures, values, drawing, all of that. Gosh, it's a beautiful spring day out here today. I'm so glad to be out on the patio. Now look at all those different colors in there. Doesn't seem like that could be possible, right? But keep watching here and you'll see how they all just come together and give you the impact of a, or the impression of a, you know, a nice little pot here with very minimal amount of blending. Now I'll go a little lighter and warmer here, really where that sun is hitting it. And likewise on the cooler side, a little lighter and cooler as it, the far edge of that, as it turns away from me, that softens that edge. And now I'll go in with some dark accents here. Doesn't look so dark on the uh, video here because I'm getting a reflection. 
but the lip is black here, so I'm going to go ahead and get all those darks in now. Ellipses can be hard to draw. If you go back to the drawing part and, and look at what I did there, I kind of found the center line of the horizontal and the vertical of the ellipse and then drew it in using some straight lines. You can see I'm painting it that way too. Sometimes small segments that are a straight line can give you a more accurate ellipse than um, if you were trying to actually draw a curved line. Now look down at the bottom of that pot just quickly. Look at how um, realistic that looks without being, you know, too rendered or blended or anything. Now I'm putting just some highlights on the lip of that pot. And we'll start in with some of the dirt that's in there that is actually catching some sunshine. Now I'll mix up my background color here. It's just concrete. It's not really too interesting. I don't want to make it boring, so it's more about color than anything else here. I've mixed up a nice, very light, but warm temperature color. And look at how it glows when it's put on top of that uh, pre-toned gesso board. You'll also notice that every few brush strokes, I modify the temperature of that color. So I add a little red to make it pink, a little yellow to make it uh, yellow, and um, the two of those actually make a really nice peach color. But I'm not blending it all together, just changing my mixture ever so slightly within the same value, just to change the temperature. I think that that helps make this concrete a little more interesting to look at. And since it's so warm and I pushed the shadow a little bit cool, it reinforces the impact, the visual statement of, uh, you know, a warm, sunny day. You know, design is so important in our paintings. You could take something that's pretty uh, boring and with the right design make a visual statement that has a lot of impact. I'm hoping to do that here with the position of my subject on my panel. Now I'm introducing a little bit of uh, cool light into this. And that'll help the plane of the concrete to recede. It's getting cooler toward the top. It's further in the distance. The value is still very light and you get some very clean violet purples in there and blues. Now I'm just going to integrate some of those light color um, warm and cool brush strokes as it transitions. Now, why did I do the background first? Well, because I want these colors to remain pure. If I painted the green and the red of the flower in here first, I risk picking up some of those greens in the background. So I've left a little bit of an outline around my subject there, and I'll begin going in and painting these geranium flowers now. Look at those colors. I'm using a quinacridone red today instead of a lizard permanent. Um, the quinacridone gives me a nice, um, uh, you know, a high-intensity red-purple. It's a cool red, basically. And because it's a modern pigment, uh, it's, it's very, it's got a high tinting strength. So if I were to use a cadmium here to get this red, cadmium red into white's going to turn pink really quick and gray down. These modern pigments are ground really ultra-fine and they have a very high tinting strength. So they, you know, they don't succumb to the, uh, you know, the, the graying down of adding white as quickly. So I'm starting with the darks in the flower 
and you notice that I went from kind of a purple to a red, but all in that same dark value range. Now I'm using this mid-tone light. Um, it's either mid-tone or light, but it's a lighter value. It's not my lightest highlight, but a lighter value to capture the shapes of the blooms here. And I'm not trying to just, you know, copy the flower. I'm just looking for shapes um, of a particular value and color temperature to get down here, like little puzzle pieces or, you know, pieces of stained glass. But I'm not thinking about flower. Just shapes of color. Now I'm going in with a, a little bit lighter value here. It's not a highlight, but it's the lightest major value that I have in these flowers here. And see, even with all that white, that color looks nice and pink, vibrant pink, not chalky. Oh, listen to those birds. I love it. Feels good to get out on the patio after a long winter. These warm days, the days are getting longer. Go to the nursery, I just want to fill the yard with flowers and live outside. So obviously the, the flower here, the pink, is going to be the star of the show. It's the most vibrant. And I'm going to start there, get this into where I like it. Then I'll begin now with the, uh, the foliage. Again with the darks. I've got the two piles of green mixed up here, one dark, one light. To represent the, the major bodies of color from the light uh, side, the leaves that are in light and the areas that are in shadow in there. And when you're painting, you know, just paint the area that's that color. Um, sometimes I see students will paint maybe the whole area this dark green and then go back in with the light green on top of it. You know, one, you mix in color and you end up with a different value than you intended. And two, that's just, you know, wasting your energy. Try to paint more efficiently. Really look for the shape and the color. Mix that up and put it in the right spot. The better able you're, you are to do that, the more efficient you're going to be as a painter. Now you'll notice in the dark green here, I'm using that mother pool of color there and I'm modifying it to the cool side right now. Some of those leaves in the back are, are looking a little cooler to my eye. Again, all in the same value range though, it's all this shadow color. And as I come forward, that dark green lightens up, or I mean warms up a little bit, actually. As long as you don't change the value either much darker or much lighter, then all of these little shapes, no matter what their color temperature, they're going to hold together as one group of a value. Just a few more of these in here. Now if I pick up a little pink on my brush into the green, no big deal. It kind of just dissipates and goes away. Had I painted the green first and then tried to put in the pink bloom, any green I pick up in the pink would immediately tone that, that pink down and take away its punch. Okay, there's a few spots of really warm green in here. I think some areas of reflected light in the shadow. 
really warms it up, makes it fun to look at here, makes it glow. Some of these leaves are actually reflecting up light uh, in a way that kind of, they're, they're not really not translucent, but it's kind of giving that really warm yellow green like you would um, see if the light was coming from behind a transparent leaf. A nice pure yellow, saturated. Now I'm jumping in and painting the surface of the leaves that are catching the light. I've got that mother pool of color there. Notice how it's grayed down and lightened. It's, uh, you know, really a little more chalky compared to uh, the other colors because it's in direct sunlight here. and I'm drawing these leaves. I'm painting the mass, but at the same time trying to get that edge in place and looking accurate for um, the shape of the leaves. Filling in those puzzle pieces. Now sometimes this can get uh, a little bit tough to keep track of your drawing when you're, you're painting a complex set of leaves or something like this. So I find it's a little easier if I identify the one that I kind of my base shape, like that, that leaf in the middle of front there, or even the bloom, and then painting from outward from there, saying, all right, what's the next leaf to that? What's the next shape to that? And just working outward, and then if you get lost you can always kind of go back to that that main leaf or bloom that you started from and say all right well I'm, I'm three shapes over to the left what is that helps you find your place again okay what am I doing here well this is a little this is an old brush I had to cut off to it was too long and then I sharpened the end of it well I like the bold graphic nature of this design so I'm going right in and I'm scraping out or drawing in uh, a graffito type of an effect the outline of the leaves even some marks on the edge of the pot there and I'm gonna leave these that adds to the graphic nature of this makes it a little more fun a little more bold and it um, it shifts my brain from thinking about shapes to back to line and outline of these leaves here a lot of fun try it in your painting if you haven't Now I'm going to get some of the, the lightest lights in these leaves here. This is what really will pull some of these leaves forward and out from the shadows. It's coming together, isn't it? Now this is where I'm slowing down and really looking at my subject more to say, all right, where is this one little bit of color? How does it define the leaf? If I could only put down three or four more brush strokes here, where would they be? These are the things that are characteristic of the leaf. And uh, without them, you're, you're kind of missing the mark. So what are those brief summary marks you can make that are really characteristic of that plant? Now I'm putting in some dark accents in here. I had my shadow color, right? And then my light color. But you also have a highlight and a dark accent. And that's what I'm working on now are the dark accents. Now I'm going back in and um, cleaning up that edge with my background color. You see I have to go right up to the, uh, the pink and I will in the green here in a minute. And every stroke or two, I'm picking up 
some of that color and I gotta clean my brush off if I wanna keep that background color clean. But with this background color, then I can clean up my drawing, get the edges right, carving into the uh, the green here, for example. I'm putting in some, you know, they're, they're not really sky holes, but that's the equivalent of it. Some of the areas where you can see through the foliage and see the concrete behind it. And look how that makes it just stand out. It jumps off the canvas now, the, uh, the foliage there. Just don't get carried away. What I'm doing here is just really following what I'm seeing in front of me. But wow, what a difference that makes. Helps me to find the edges of those leaves. And just wraps up this painting really nicely, I think. So thanks for joining me today. I uh, think this painting came out really nice. Hope you enjoyed hanging out on my back patio with me and maybe learned something a bit about how I approach a painting. Here's geraniums. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.